Rhode Island here. And today we're talking more Superman and Lois. We have a very special guest. Uh, I've been looking forward to this conversation for a while. Uh, actor Wole Parks. Uh, you are our fourth cast member from Superman and Lois. So thank you for your time. I'm excited. No. Who, who, who else did you get to talk so to? So we've had Alex Garfin on the show twice. Uh, we've match. had Sophia Hasmick and uh, Indy Navarrete. Uh, yeah. You're on the list. And then we are slated to have a conversation. Um, his name escapes me. Uh, the newest Kent brother. I can't. The so name, Michael Bishop. Yeah. Michael Bishop is due to come on next week. So nice, nice. I'm excited. This is really cool because I've, I've said this to other castmates and I'll say it to you. The thing that I love about this show, I mean, there's many things, but the one thing that I really love, it's not just another origin story or a story about Superman and Lois, but really mm -hmm. this show is just embedded with themes of family, relationships, yeah. good, evil, it doesn't matter. It's about relationships. Is that a fair assessment, I would say? A hundred percent. And I and I'm glad you pointed that out because I think that is what Todd helping her original showrunner. We have two now, Todd and Brett um are do it together. I think that's what he wanted to do because it's like, how do we come at Superman from a new perspective? I mean, because it's been done so many times, oh, yeah. you know, they're, they're redoing it again. You see, um, with the James Gunn now with the new movie coming <laughs> yes. out. Uh, yeah, exactly. So so it's like, what's unique? Cause because like I, the way he describes it is, how do you tell a, man, a story about a man who could fly, but make it grounded? And you know what we could all relate to? Family, like you said, relationships. Because regardless of how powerful or invincible you can be, relationships are something that we could all connect to and relate to. So yeah, I, I think that's, I think you're 100% right. Yes. And even when we first meet your character, John Henry Irons, and mm -hmm. we all get thrown for a Decepticon moment because you get recognized in the suit as Captain Luther. So now everybody's going, oh God, it's Lex. But really yeah. we find out throughout the rest of the season and on and on into now that that's not necessarily the case per se, even now going from a formidable foe to, mm -hmm. to Clark and to Superman to now becoming a frenemy or an enemy or a friend, however you want to describe it, you still have that They're family friends. dynamic. Go with yeah. Friends. Yeah, so I think that's what makes it like fun. And mm -hmm. as you said, Superman is a handful of other superheroes where we have just really seen it like in every iteration. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think no, Dean Kane is tired of answering questions at Comic-Cons. <laughs> if he's seen your show, <laughs> if you Google him in every Comic-Con I don't know how often you do the circuit. Do you, I'm assuming you probably no, I haven't done any of them. But wait, so this. so they ask him and he, what does he say? Every he's like, time, no, like, have you seen the new Superman and Lois? And he's like, No, I don't watch television. So let's talk about this because this character is complicated. Uh he's very layered. It seems like playing him could be extremely intense uh because yes. of what we see. Yes. No, and that's a great uh, point. And it was, especially I'll tell you what, season one, when we shot, you know, I, you know, everyone knows we shoot in Vancouver. And back then, that was like the height of the pandemic. We were one of right. the first shows to come back. And back then they were doing um, two weeks quarantine for anyone that that crossed the border. So so we were stuck there. We we're kind of isolated by ourselves. You know, like a lot of people, like a few people had their families with them. Most people did not. Like I said, you couldn't cross the border. So we were stuck up there and it took 10 months to shoot because of like, you know, all the thing, you know, it's a new show and COVID stuff and people get sick, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, for me, honestly, it was like, I remember at the end of 10 months, I, I needed a break from him because, it, it, you know, I was living in that darkness for so long because he is so heavy. Um, and that's why I was also, you know, thankful that season two came and he started lightening up a little bit. And, and you know, it was about more about like the relationship with him and his daughter and like building that out and how is it to be a single dad now and all that. So, so yeah, it, it's kind of nice to see that arc. Like, like, I just, I just want John to be happy. I just wanted him to like I think, be yeah. chill. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Bruno Mannheim comes around, kind of stops that. He's not going to be that happy for the season, but that's okay. We'll get him there eventually. Yes, but it is also a lot of fun. 
you know, when when we watch this to see that character lighten a little bit, because you come in hot, obviously. And again, there the assumptions are swirling about who this person is. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things, and I feel like it's very much worth noting, is that there is not this character, although he exists in this world per se you have been able to create and develop him from scratch like he is we have not yeah. really seen him directly in any of these iterations i don't believe no no that's and that is a cool part I, you know obviously everyone jokes about the shack movie which i've not seen uh, uh but I, i've told people i will i will force myself i shouldn't say force myself but i'll, I'll watch over the break uh, over summertime um uh but yeah you're right that's been kind of cool is to make this an original character. Like to be honest with you, when I first got cast, I thought I was Lex Luthor. You know, yeah, like, like, I would uh, assume that that's probably would be a very smart assumption. Yeah, that's what I assume. Like you know, because the, the the sides, you know, they were like dummy sides. Like my name was like you know Greg Smith or something generic. But um, but 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 like you you can tell who they were going for, and so that's what it was. And I was worried because I know there are so many iconic versions of him, like you know Gene Hackman, uh, Michael Rosenbaum, all these people. So I was I was worried that I was like, okay, I got to live up to those guys. I don't want to I don't want to watch their stuff. I don't I don't want to be compared. I want to do my own version. So when I found that I was John Henry Irons, that kind of freed me. You know, it allowed me to do what I wanted to do and especially infusing him with all the backstory that they gave him, like that rich backstory of like, you know, losing his wife is like leaving his daughter, abandoning her and going on this revenge mission and and all the PTSD and the trauma he's been through. Uh, it was it was cool to bring that to life. And now we know it's common information knowledge. We do have a Lex Luthor now, but yes. we don't really know much. And your character for people who have watched or who, who haven't, I'm sorry, we're not really spoiling much. You are the suit in particular. All mm -hmm. of that is somehow related to that Luther Corp, which I think we'll probably yes. explore and get more yes. of that information. But I can imagine when you first get the role and people see you, I mean, if, if you even Googled your name that first season, when we met you, people were like, oh, it's Lex. And then it's like, the media just went berserk with it, like on every level. Yeah, no, no, it was, and, and you know, to be honest with you, um, it's so funny. I actually, I, 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 I hadn't thought about this in a while. I remember we did, um, our first press joint interview, or whatever junk or whatever you want to call it. We did it remotely because we were in Vancouver. Like I said, we did it as a cast, and honestly, it was really weird because a few press people asked questions to Todd and Tyler about my character rather than asking me, which was kind of weird because uh, they thought I was Lex. I was the whole idea. Everyone thought I was Lex. And they're like, how does it feel? What do you think about this Lex? Blah, blah, blah. And I was, and for me, it was just odd uh, because I'm like, guys, I, I'm, I'm I'm here. Uh, like, I know. Hey. It was weird. I even saw one headline. It was like Superman and Lois introduced first African-American Lex Luthor. It was like crazy, which I, I mean, that would be cool. But I mean, it's just interesting, like how far, the media took yes, that yeah. information. And, 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 and it's still great to, I mean, your character is awesome no matter what. But yeah. No, no, no. And I appreciate that. But yeah, no, you're right. And that was a big thing. I mean, like, and trust me, I know how the internet can get. So like, you know, because some people are like, oh, it's so cool. Other people are like, oh, they're just trying to be woke. And like, you know, there's always... You can't please everybody. So I very much, A, I knew what was going on anyway, so I was happy. But B, I, 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 my job is to do the best justice I can for my character. And so I do that. I try to block out all the noise and just do the best I can. Uh, and I think people were surprised with it. And, I, I, you know, see, people seem to have connected with it. So I'm really glad they, they took the route that they did. Yeah, fantastic work. Well, I've asked this question of your other castmates. Who have mm -hmm. you been able to share scenes with this season that you either A, haven't shared with before or B, mm -hmm. have had very limited time with on screen, but now you get to do things with differently or yeah yeah well before. i mean well there's two i mean like as far as like you know people who've been on the show so far em and i work a lot together this season we've already seen that in a couple episodes it's gonna it's gonna continue on and i love em like you know i i think we all say it and it almost sounds cliche and like we're faking it but like we all get along like we all hang yeah, out i've we, heard we, that we, like from everybody yeah we we, we truly do i saw sophia Two days ago, <laughs> like, like, you know, like, like, and like, she's hanging out with one of the producers, I think that today, like we all just, we all hang out if we, we can. 
Um, so it's been cool to work with Emmanuel because our characters really didn't interact that much before. Uh, but for me, the big one is working with Chad Coleman, just because Chad and I, like, I, I, I met Chad, we did All American together a couple of years ago. Yeah. Our characters didn't overlap, but we had one day where we were on set together all day and we got to know each other. And Chad is a character, man. Chad is amazing. He's so smart. He's so all over the place in his intelligence and how he thinks. Uh, and so for us, we had so many scenes this season and, and it was really fun to go up against somebody who's like, you know, has this kind of gravitas and has been in the industry working for so long. Like, I'm really looking forward to what people see um, us get into uh, as the season progresses. Yeah, we've had Chad on the show before from All American. So I want to I want to wind things back a little bit, because if I'm correct, and sometimes this information on IMDb can be a little bit skewed, oh, but you sure. started out in soap opera, right? That was really yeah. where things got started for you. And then you land a few other things, the Vampire Diaries, Cade, that was big. Yeah. And then yeah, it yeah. just progressed from there, your journey as an yeah. actor. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's correct. Yeah, I think the first thing I did actually while I was in college was there was a sh MTV show called Undressed okay. back in the day. I don't know how oh, old you yeah, are. That's real old school. That's way back in the day. Exactly. I think I was like 19 or 20. I was really young. Uh, uh, geez, I was I was so young. Uh, uh, so that was like, I think my first role. And then, yeah, like you said, things have progressed since there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been lucky. It's weird. Like somebody like was kind of going through my IMDb for me. And I was like, oh, I guess I, I, ha I am an actor. Oh, I guess I do have a career. Just because, I don't know, I, I'm very humble. And like, to me, this is a job. I, I take it very seriously. And I put a lot of work and a lot of passion into it. But I'm, I, I'm not one to have a big ego like, like, you know, like, oh, I'm an actor. Have you seen me? I'm an actor. Like, I hate, I, I hate that attitude. Like, my, my mom was a teacher for, for many, many decades. Mm -hmm. And to me, teachers deserve much more respect because I think education and passing that along is such an important thing. And, you know, like, that's how you get people out of poverty and all that. So I don't know. I, I, I for me, I, I, I give more props to that. So the acting stuff, I like it, but it's, it's not like the end all be all of everything. That's very cool. Yeah. I was talking to somebody yesterday who was on another show and she's done so much since that started. And we were having a similar conversation and she got a little bit emotional. She's like, I, you're really taking me on a journey of my career from when I yeah. left Sacramento or San Jose and made it all the way to LA. She's like, I just have, for it's been so long that I've like forgotten everything that I've done. But yeah. by all measure, you have achieved, I feel, the success as an actor because you're doing what you set out to do. Did, how did Thank that you. journey begin for you as a storyteller? Where did that happen for you, Wally? You know, it's a good question. So so it was kind of by accident. Like, okay. like I was a nerdy, goofy kid growing up. Like, like I went to a specialized school called Stuyvesant High School in New York. Okay. Uh, um, and like I was, I was always in like kind of a gifted class since third grade. Like I was a math guy. I was planning to be an accountant. Or a math wow. teacher. That that was my backup. Like I, I still tutor math on the side, just like volunteering uh, uh um for, for organization, like just because I think I love numbers. And and so what happened was I was in uh I was in band class <laughs> back in the day in, in high school. I think I was a junior, I think. And uh a casting director came in and pointed to all of us. And, and you know, I thought I was in trouble. And later she was like, No, I'm casting for this national Kit Kat commercial, you can make all this money, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, I just I, I I booked the role and like I was like, oh, you can make money acting. And it was kind of fun. So I started doing school plays on the side and and then I started really liking it. And then I, you know, I auditioned for NYU, uh, got in there and I did math and acting as, as a double major. And, and yeah, but it's it's a weird thing where it's like, oh, I, you know, I, it's kind of that sliding doors theory where like if I would have cut class that day my life would be completely different. I, I would not be talking to you. I would not be an actor. I'd be at some accounting firm or doing finance or something totally different. That's crazy how kismet yeah. those moments are. And no matter how many people I talk to at any level of this industry, it's all comes down to like one specific moment. Mm -hmm. And that's cool about the commercial thing because that can be bread and butter for a lot of actors when they're in between. Oh, yeah. Jobs. Oh, yeah. I, I, People I don't do realize, I don't think, I don't know how it is now, but like at one point, those commercials sometimes, if not more often, paid more than some acting jobs. Oh, as like a guest star or a recurring, reoccurring character on a show. It, 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 could, it could still be that case, to be honest with you. I mean, it all depends because like, 
It's weird. I think people people assume like who aren't in the business, like if they see you on TV, they're like, oh, you're rich. You're making a ton of money. Oh, yeah, I'm this like, guy's no, 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 loaded. No. Yeah, exactly. And like that is far from the case. I think that the the the, the I think that the statistics are something like in SAG. I think it's only like five percent of 5%, actors. Yeah, I've talked about yeah. that recently. Yeah, it's crazy. Exactly, make enough to like get get by. Like five percent of, of people in this massive industry. Wow. You. That's what I'm saying. And then like a fraction of a one percent are quote unquote famous. You know what I mean? Like like it's. It's it's a it's a hard industry. That's why when people sort of talk flippantly about Hollywood, and I get it, like you know, there's Hollywood could definitely like think full of themselves and be have egos. I understand that. I I see it. But at the same time, though, for somebody to say like that woman you talked to, like who left from Sacramento, and it was like, I'm gonna take a leap. I'm gonna do this, and there's nothing guaranteed to do that. And have the balls to see it through. That's huge. It takes a lot of courage. It's not easy doing this business. It's it's it, it's a, it's a mental trip in a lot of ways. It is. Yeah. Jenny Pearson. She was on the TV show Powerless about. It was a superhero show. DC's first like comedy office workplace show. Yeah, they were like insurance brokers. I heard about it. Yes, yeah. and the president was Bruce Wayne's brother. And she left the Bay Area, and her goal was to be a series regular on a show. And she did wow. it. And it brings me to another question I want to ask you. So you had the New York experience. You did the commercials. So it might yeah. be different. But when you first arrived in L.A. and you started meeting people in town, did that mysteriousness exist for you as far as you, you saw people who were acting, but they weren't working or appeared to not be working, but seemed to have money and were buying things. And like, you were just trying to figure out like, how are these people surviving? Did you ever have that visceral moment? Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. My, my journey is kind of weird insofar as I, the way I've worked it out. Cause um, like I said, I, I was born and raised in New York. I did stuff. And because I was doing, I was actually working in finance okay, for many so you years. You had like or, a job when you got there. I had a normal job. Like okay. acting was the hobby. I was kind of acting on the side. And uh, uh, and I ended up doing this movie called Premium Rush with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Donnie oh, yeah. Ramirez and all this. Yeah, back in the day, which is so crazy. I, I remember shooting that. Was that was a good movie, by the way. It was fun. It came out better than I thought. Only because I wasn't sure how it was going to come out, but I actually enjoyed it. And so I agree. Thank you. Uh, so, so, um, so, so, so with, with that movie, like I, I did that while I was still working finance. And, and then like my, my boss, I'm sorry, not my boss, my, my, my agent at the time was like, dude, you can make it if you, if you give it a shot. And, and I was like, okay. And then I, you know, I, I saved up for a year and I, you know, it started to make the move. And so thankfully, like, you know, I, I, you know, I had a cushion. I didn't have to wait tables. And on top of that, I had an agency already. I, I they had offices in New York and LA. So I thankfully had some grounding okay. in LA, but it's so, so, so the mysteriousness of it, like was more so not about the business because I get it's a business. It was more so about like people kind of, like I said, like some, the weird egos and the weird mentality of LA. Cause again, I came from New York, like New York, you know, I, I don't know how much you know about New York, but New York is like straight, some of these straight shooters is what we think. Oh yeah. There's no BS. There's no personas. It's like, and I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I, I came from. So coming to LA well, like, I'll never forget. I was I was at a, I was at a party. One of my friends took me to some party or some show or whatever. And like I met a guy. And he's like, oh, hi, my name. I don't know his name, but his name was like, hi, my name is Jay Allen from CAA. And I was like. OK, I'm hi, my name's Wole. I don't it was like I didn't know what he was like. I, I just said hi. I was just like meeting random people. And I, I don't know why he gave me his full on like name and title and job. I'm like, am I supposed to now think like like a lot of you? Am I supposed to like beg for work? It was it would that that was weird to get past, but again, you just kind of wade through that. And I feel like honestly, nowadays, a lot of people have that because social media and everyone wants to feel like they're more important than they have to be. And I don't know. It's just I feel like that's just life. I now, appreciate right? your no? candor and honesty. Yeah, I was listening to some podcast and they were talking about like if you're on a dating app in LA, one of the questions is who are you repped by and who did your headshots? Like that's part of like the questionnaire, you know, cause everybody's an actor. I'm an yeah. actor on the CW. Okay. Well, what have you done? Oh, I would did background, which no disrespect to background actor. Cause I've done that before. And that's, that it's can hard. be hard work. Um, I, I respect them. They, they, it's, yeah, brutal. I, it's, it's, it's brutal. They, they get such respect for me. Cause that is not fun. You you're treated like cattle in some ways. And I feel so bad. Oh yeah. I mean, I remember doing some shows 
in New Mexico, getting to set at four in the morning, you know, getting vanned over to the set and then sitting around for hours before we even were used. Sometimes some groups didn't even get used and they just yeah. got paid for the date. But I digress. It's it's a wild world you're in. One last question. And I always yeah. like to ask this of everybody because you obviously are you. We've gotten to know you a little bit in this mm -hmm. conversation, but you've also played so many different characters, different variations. Out mm -hmm. of all the characters that you've played that you can recall, mm -hmm. has there been something that one of those characters has taught you about yourself, Wole, like something that you didn't oh, know wow. or maybe you did know and it just became more clear, maybe a trait from a yeah. character and you're like, oh, wow, I kind of no, identify with this a little bit. That's a great question. That's something that a character has taught me because because I, I, there are things I've learned from working on set and working with other people, but I'm still trying to think as a character itself. That's a great question. Um, hmm. I, I think... I, I guess to be honest with you, if, if if there was anything I learned, I mean, probably from this character, I'm trying to give you like a cheesy answer. That's okay. I like, mean, it like, could like, be like, any of those things that we mentioned. No, no, know? no. I I know. I know. I'll, I'll I'll tell you this. Like, I don't. It, it's not. It's not the character because like, I guess for me, I I like I said, I take it from as a job, and I and I and I and I, and I go into research with things. Um, so there's nothing specifically as a character like this is kind of a tangent i'll tell you where i get most of my stuff from or at least what's helped me in life i'm sober i've been sober for a little over 16 and a half years wow, and, and i think that has helped me because that has brought a lot of humility to me and so and so for that I, I I can like take little pieces of each character and say, okay, how do I infuse myself with that into the character? And so therefore we be kind of become one. It's not exactly the question no, you asked, perfect, but like that's a great answer. I think that Yeah, that's the best out, way I can yeah. say it because yeah, because like I've never thought about it from that perspective. But I'll tell you, I want to think about it after we stop talking. And I'm gonna really be like, Yeah, what have I learned from my characters? I never I never thought of it from that perspective. That's really interesting. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to think about because I feel like again, I've said this before dozens of times you know, your world is so different than what most people would know of an eight to five, whatever the case might be. And you get to play yeah. so many different unique people. So yeah. there you go. Some food for thought. Well, how many episodes do we have left before we go on a season break? Yeah. So, so we just, uh, they just aired episode five. So there are 13 episodes this season. So that leaves eight. Uh, uh, and I know we just had a, a, a um, uh, not a hiatus, but I know we just had a repeat this week. Next week they come back with episode six. So, so yeah, there's eight more coming. Uh, a lot of a big roller coaster with Bruno, and they already teased the Lex Luthor stuff. I know they just dropped the trailer. I saw that today for for Lex coming up, uh, Michael Cudless. So yeah, it's it's gonna be an interesting ride. And I think what what um what I, what I'm proud of. Because I, I think it was a, sw a big swing that they took was about the cancer stuff, yeah. and uh, and it seems like people because I, I you know I I I've heard from people I know like you know it was a big swing insofar as like it can be all consuming, and I think so far people have connected with it, uh, uh, and I hope they still do as it go as we as we you know continue to go down that road, um, but yeah I'm just I just appreciate the fans being open to to just the show and just what they're trying to do this season and I, and I and I just love our fans for that. We have we have amazing fans. They're really good. Yeah, the best. Well, again, this has just been a thrill ride. I've been looking forward to this. Congratulations on all your success, Wole. I, I appreciate your Thank time you. with us today. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you, Brett.